Norfolk Southern Rail will have to answer for the freight train disaster earlier this year that impacted East Palestine, Ohio. President Biden issued an executive order Wednesday that will hold the rail giant accountable and protects residents. According to the White House, the order ensures that operator, quote, continues to be held accountable for this disaster to address any of the disaster's long-term effects and to ensure federal assistance is available to affected communities should needs develop that are not met by Norfolk Southern. Here to discuss this further is status quo investigative journalist Louis DeAngelis. Louis, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me back. So, Lewis, how are people making it and recovering? Because the news media, for the most part, focused on this for, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks. They leave. People still have to recover. There's long-term health impacts, implications that we haven't really talked about on the national media. So to talk a little bit about how the community is recovering, where they are, and what are the long-term projections? Absolutely. So uh, I've been on the ground collectively in East Palestine since February for about a month, over four trips. Um, I was just there most recently in August. And unfortunately, folks are still dealing with all sorts of issues related to this, uh, whether that be still ongoing health issues. Um, we've talked about some of the symptoms here on this show before when I've been on, uh, ranging from breathing issues to, you know, if you're in some of these areas that are closer to the derailment site or near the creeks that are still contaminated, uh, dizziness, rashes, all sorts of things. Um, and again, a lot of these chemicals that were uh, detonated in this small town uh, are known carcinogens. So um, while those health impacts right now are scary and, and those health impacts that folks experienced in February, March, April, and again, continuing, um, the scarier stuff comes down the line. Uh, in addition to that, uh, a lot of folks that I'm speaking with have literally been living in hotels uh, since February in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. uh, some folks, and th those are folks who've been able to get the relocation. Some folks have wanted to be relocated and haven't been able to, but at this point, a lot of those decisions are still being made by Norfolk Southern themselves. Uh, those, that is where folks need to go if they wanna get any assistance at all. So still uh, things in East Palestine uh, may sound rosy if you listen to some select reports on this, but having spent a lot of time speaking with literally hundreds of people who live in this town on the ground, uh, things are still uh, not quite right in East Palestine at this we point. We really appreciate your work there and doing real investigative journal journalism. It's so important. Talk to us a little more specifically about this executive order. It's described mm -hmm. as something that's going to create accountability for Norfolk Southern. How much is that true and how are residents responding to news of this executive order? Uh, for sure. I'll get into the specifics of it first, but I definitely want to touch on resident reactions right afterwards. I've heard from quite a few of them this morning. So if I don't get there, please remind me. Um, first off, the order uh, at face value looks like a step in the right direction. However, uh, a lot of the language in here is pretty loosey goosey, if you ask me. Um, we'll see how they actually carry through with it. But breaking it down, uh, the first half of the order kind of touts the initial federal government response, uh, cites the work of the US EPA claiming that the air and the soil and the water uh, in East Palestine is safe. Um, again, when I've spoken on here before, as well as my reporting on status coup, which you can check that out here on YouTube if you haven't seen us before, uh, youtube.com slash status coup. But um, we've, we've discussed it at length that the EPA testing here, especially that was done in residential homes, uh, has been wholly inadequate. Uh, there are lots of experts who are on the record on this, including researchers from Purdue University, uh, other college professors, folks with PhDs in chemistry, toxicology, and the like. Um, so that's a, a little bit of an issue starting right off with this executive order. But to move into the specifics of what it will actually do, um, there, the, the first big thing is that a federal disaster coordinator uh, will be appointed within the next five days here. Um, and that coordinator has a couple roles, uh, but the primary one is to get a uh, state and community input uh, as to uh, what is going on in East Palestine right now to determine any unmet needs. Um, I've discussed unmet needs here on this show before, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a big issue because when the governor of Ohio, Governor DeWine, uh, issued the initial uh, request for a disaster declaration to the White House in July, six months too late, in my opinion, mm. uh, he said on that declaration that there are currently no unmet needs in East Palestine. Mm. Uh, it doesn't take long to find that there is a long list of unmet needs in East Palestine. So that has been an issue here because under the Stafford Act, which is what uh, a national disaster or a de disaster declaration um, actually falls underneath is the Stafford Act. It requires the state to submit 
uh, the list of unmet needs that are there. So we'll see if this federal disaster coordinator starting in here um, essentially gets the governor of Ohio to admit that there are unmet needs in East Palestine. Um, so that's a caveat that could help here if this coordinator does find that. Um, and then the last piece is uh, frequent reports uh, from the EPA uh, on uh, air quality testing, soil testing, as well as water quality testing to the president, uh, as well as reports from uh, HHS and the CDC on health impacts uh, to the residents. Um, on the HHS side of this, uh, the secretary of HHS could actually issue a public health emergency uh, over this. Um, it's very vague what that can necessarily do, um, but that is another card that could be played here. Isn't that what happened in, uh, I forget which town it was, but this example is often brought up, it was brought up in the context of COVID, it's brought up by a lot of leftists, that there was a town, I think during the Obama administration, to which they extended uh, health care, kind of basically Medicare yeah. to everyone in the town because of a natural disaster. Is that something that could happen here? Um, potentially, it's a, it's a little bit unclear. So that you're talking about Libby, Montana, I believe. Mm, that's right. And I think that that was actually like slid into some legislation that went through Congress. Um, so it might be a little bit different. But mm. um, I'm hopeful that something could happen here. But I'm not going to get my hopes up at this point. Uh, I mean, so far, I mean, when the CDC was in East Palestine, uh, they actually were going door to door to residents homes. And many members of the CDC actually got sick while they were in town mm. and left. Um, so that tells you, and that, that, that was in March, so we were over a month after the derailment, um, and a number of those CDC representatives who were there going door to door, they weren't even at the derailment site itself, just in the streets of East Palestine, which the EPA, three days after this explosion happened there, told everyone the air quality is safe. Meanwhile, the CDC, when they go to visit, go, go get sick. So, um, you know, I, they should, you know, the President Biden should already have that information uh, if they looked at some of this. I mean, this was reported by CNN um, that those CDC workers were sick. Um, the CDC also had a public town hall in East Palestine with uh, the EPA back in March or April, uh, where a representative of the CDC essentially told residents, look, you know, we don't know how to remove these chemicals from your body, but we can treat your cancer later. I'm paraphrasing mm -hmm. a little bit, but... Uh, that is almost a direct quote from what the CDC representative said at a town hall uh, in East Palestine. Lewis, where is President Biden in all of this, one? And then two, do you know what role HUD is playing in this? Because HUD has something called CDBG, Disaster Relief, Community Development Block Grant Disaster Relief, which they can approve to allow the city, local municipalities, et cetera, to sort of rebuild after a major disaster such as this. Do we know if any approval of funds have been approved to send uh, to the local leaders there? Through HUD, I'm not aware of any. Really, the, the folks in East Palestine haven't directly seen a lot of federal government direct response, with the exception of the EPA doing uh, testing that the residents 100% do not trust. Um, so again, for folks who are getting any sort of help, financial assistance, they need to go to an assistance center that is run by Norfolk Southern, again, the company that caused all of their issues in the first place. And in many cases, these folks are left to go and and almost beg uh, for help in some cases. They're needing to prove uh, you know, exactly what they're spending everything on. And these are folks, again, with families, pets who have been living in hotels, bouncing around between them because they're not able to get a long stay out of many of them um, for seven months at this point, they've been doing this. As far as President Biden and, and you know, where he's been, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Again, we saw that report a couple uh, weeks ago that he said he's been too busy to go to East Palestine. Um, the residents that I spoke with last night and this morning uh, who are kind of giving their reactions to this um, have been a little bit of a mixed bag. I mean, uh, a little bit of cautious optimism. I mean, folks have been asking for a disaster declaration here in East Palestine, uh, again, for months and months and months. This isn't the disaster declaration yet, but this is the first step you would take to getting there. Um, but for a lot of other folks, they're saying, look, this is way too little too late. The damage is already done. I spoke with resident Lonnie Miller briefly this morning. Um, I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit what she told me, but she said that the widespread damage is already done, uh, including the physical side of this, the mental side of this, the financial side of this, and so much more. Uh, the powers that be in DC have failed East Palestine uh, is what she told me this morning. I know that that is the sentiment of a lot of folks, but they are holding out a little bit of hope that maybe finally the federal government does the right thing here at wow. this point. Again, it might be too little too late, but I hope not.
Lewis, thank you so much for doing this important work and joining us to give us an update. Thank you both for having me so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Lewis.